Do you want to stay up to date with the messiest drama on the internet? Or what about those crazy viral challenges? Then be sure to tune in to TMZ Verified, the podcast. I'm Wild. I'm Steph. And each week we're either breaking down the spicy viral stories or we're hanging out with the most popular influencers around. Tana Mojo is in the building. I don't even know if they're hating. They're probably just telling the truth, but we love the haters too. Sophia Franklin. Yeah, I mean, we can talk, but like, let's be real with each other, you know? Bryce Hall is here, y'all. Make some noise, people. I'm, I'm single, by the way. Right. So if you like viral drama, influencer culture, and just overall hot messness, check out new episodes of TMZ Verified every Thursday right here on Spotify. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about changing your mindset to think wealthy rather than laborly. I don't know. Enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Age of Jeremy again. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. I am your host for this podcast. If you don't know who I am, I am the co-founder and CFO of a business called 3 Wear Academy. You should go check it out. We have a seven-day free trial for anybody who wants to come and go through our 120-day challenge, the business myself, and a little gentleman named Coach JV. He's not really, he's actually a pretty buff guy. Um, Coach JV and I started, um, we have our 120-day challenge in that 3 Warrior Academy. We have um, our wealth pillars. We have courses on all different types of stuff. So come in and check it out. Seven day free trial. There should be a link somewhere in something where we are at. I'm also the CEO and co-founder of a business called Age of Radio. Check us out on Instagram at Age of Radioverse on Twitter, Age of Radio. We have a fantastic community. It's called Addicted to Podcasting on Facebook. Head on over to Facebook, go to Addicted to Podcasting. All these links are in the episode description, so you can definitely check them out there. We are also launching our first app. It's a crypto aggregator called Merlin. It is the smartest way to track your crypto. You so you should definitely check that out as well, is what I am saying. Uh, and those are the things that I have going on. And what this podcast is about is all of the cool stuff that I do as I, one, build wealth, two, build businesses. I guess it would be one, building businesses, and then two, building wealth from those businesses and all the things that I learn along the way. You can check me out on Instagram at Age of Jeremy, on Twitter at Age of Jeremy Q, on LinkedIn at Age of Jeremy. And more importantly, you should go right now over to YouTube. If you're able to, there's also a link in the, de- the description episode description as well. Go and check out my age of Jeremy, a YouTube, and we will be doing an age of radio YouTube here soon with all kinds of cool stuff, game related. But I guess, uh, before we get into the wealth building stuff, I guess I should say, I don't know why I said, but there, um, but you should go over to YouTube and check that out again. We keep these kind of unedited like it's a radio show or something along those lines. What's also cool about the YouTube is if you don't want to listen to this in your podcatcher, you should be able to listen to it right now on YouTube. It releases on YouTube as well. It's an MP4 file, so it's a video. But if you pay for YouTube services, you should be able just to listen to it. With that um, being said, hold tight for one second because I need to roll over here and get these books. that's the great thing about doing podcasts is you can just do a podcast and it doesn't have to be crazy you can just be yourself and that's what we encourage but in today's episode we're going to talk about building wealth um but before not not really about building wealth about changing your mindset about wealth um i wasn't sure what i wanted to do on this podcast but uh, i was listening to cjv's podcast and he was talking about a piece about mindset And then that reminded me not only of mindset, but it also reminded me of, um, of building wealth. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts on what are some of the things that kind of shifted in my mind over the last 20 years on building wealth. And I'll tell you a little story, but before I do that, I want to talk about this interesting book hall. So, um, a couple of episodes ago, I talked about just buying books and not being able to read all of them. (laughs) And that continues to go. I just like buying books. 
In fact, having knowledge and books and information is more important to me um, than having, you know, a, a nice car or even a really big house. I like having my house. I've actually been spending more time in my house. I want to put some more money into my house um, uh, just because, you know, I want it to be more um, comfortable in certain spots. Um, and we never have really, you know, had the energy or time to put into the house. And now I'm trying to make that time to do some cool stuff to my house. So I'm working on getting a sprinkler system in the backyard, working on putting a new tree in, um, getting my other tree kind of fixed up. Uh, and so when people ask me a lot of the time, so we're going through the, um, index universal life insurance stuff. And, um, if you hear, I don't know if you can hear that do a little ASMR, but it's a tarot card deck. I'm not hundred percent sure why I picked it up, but I did pick it up. And so I'm not going to talk about it. So I set it back down. Um, but, when we're going through the index universal life insurance stuff uh, or life insurance, because we are building the largest life insurance company in the world um, through uh, our three T warrior Academy through freedom asset management with as a company that I manage with my good friend, coach JV or CJV, as I like to call him, um, RC likes us to call him, but I'm one of the only people that calls him that, I guess, I guess other people still call him that. I think a lot of people are still used to calling him coach. So they still call him coach, but, Point being is that um, a lot they people talk about like oh you're gonna make so much money a month uh, you know what money doesn't really motivate me all that much um, like if you say hey Jeremy you're gonna make a million dollars this month I'm like okay cool and I don't know I've been thinking a lot about that and a little bit is because money isn't really that important to me um, uh, it, it's it's important to me up to the point where I don't think that I need any more of it and the more that I get. Um, it reminds me of that uh, show Forrest Gump or that movie Forrest Gump. There's only so much money a man needs. The rest is just for show. I'm kind of like that area in my life um, just because I like studying stuff. I like giving back, I like helping people out with the money. And so I would rather see my friends and family and um, other team members super, super prosperous become super, super prosperous as well so that they can build the things that they want for their, their family. And, um, and then I would just like to, you know, build stuff and give, and that doesn't mean that I'm not going to, you know, buy real estate. Um, I'm working on trying to get some real estate, another place in Arizona, trying to build a rental property company, but it's a little bit, it's not really, I'm doing it for money. It's just because I want to do those things. And I guess the benefit is that it does provide me more and more money. But with that money, I can buy more knowledge. I can, you know, give money to the libraries. I can be philanthropic, I guess. And so it's difficult for me when people are talking about that because people get really excited about money. Money's never really excited me. And so, well, it used to excite me. And then I just realized that I didn't want any of it. Um, not that I didn't want money. It was just that I didn't really need as much as I thought. Um, and it's more about being conscientious of your money and planning out your purchases, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the wealth thing. But because I like books, I don't have a problem spending money on books. Now, I collect just books in general. I haven't gotten into the, I'm um, sorry, I'm readjusting myself in my seat. I haven't got to the place where I'm starting to invest in um, more uh, like uh, antique books yet. Um, I will probably start doing that soon. Once I have a place where I can store them properly, um, and that might be in, um, I don't know, an office, it might be in my house. I haven't decided that yet because there's so much stuff in this house. And that's why I'm trying to get this house ready over the next year to get it ready to rent out and then get my own house, another house that's a little bit bigger, um, but, or, or, and try to get much better at organizing stuff, um, because I just don't make time for it because I'm always in the middle of a grind. Um, and so I think that that is one of the other things that I've been kind of focusing on when it comes to being inside of house. But so I went on a book haul, um, and I got, I, I love penguin classics. So I, I try to get as many penguin classics as I can that make sense of things that I'm more interested than in, I'm more likely to read. So I picked up the penguin classics of Marcus Aurelius's, um, 
uh, meditations. And if you don't know what meditations is, it's written in Greek. Uh, well, this isn't written in Greek. This is written in English, but it was written in Greek by the only Roman emperor who was also a philosopher. Without any intentions of publication, the meditations of Marcus Aurelius offer a remarkable series of challenging spiritual reflections and exercises developed as the emperor struggled to understand himself and make sense of the universe. Um, I have read some of it in the past, but I've never had a copy of my own. So I just picked that up. Then I got a ping. I, I just got penguin classics. I'm, I'm, a obsessed with penguin random house right now and push convertigo um and so push convertigo is the company that publishes my japanese um uh murder mysteries that i've been reading um and so 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 anyway so i collect those and then i got uh the pillow book which is by c shono gan shin shonagan i need to learn other languages i guess um so it's written by the court gentlewoman say shonagon ostensibly for her own amusement. The Pillow Book is one of the greatest works of Japanese literature, a fascinating exploration of life amongst the nobility at the height of the um, idyllic uh, high-end period. It describes the exquisite pleasures of a confined world in which poetry, love, fashion, and whim dominated and harsh reality was kept firmly at a distance. Um, And so I picked that up because it just sounded interesting when I saw it. Um, And then I picked up a Picatus discourses and selected writings. Epictetus is a Greek stoic um, and freed slave, ran a thriving philosophy school in Nicopolis um, in the early second century AD. His animated discussions were celebrated for the rhetorical rhetorical wizardry and were written down by Arian, Arian, his most famous pupil. The discourses argue that happiness lies in learning the per- to perceive exactly what it is in our power to change and what is not, which is a stoic philosophy. And I'm not getting into stoic philosophies. I just think, and I think everybody should be uh, uh, stoic or sto- I say stoic, stoic. Um, so it, it's, it's, ba- it's basically his school is a stoic um, philosophy and Stoic philosophy says essentially that you have the ability to decide how you react to certain situations and you should do it with the four, these four values. And I can't remember what they're off from my uh, the top of my head, but essentially if you go on TikTok, Stoic Stoicism is a very big thing right now. And it's, and, and I don't have a problem with that. I think that my, um, uh, what sometimes gets me is that, um, and, uh, is that there's lots of other philo- philosophical concepts, especially Eastern philosophical concepts that we don't talk about a lot in the West. Um, and I have a bunch of books um, that maybe one day I'll write about some of them and post them on my website, which you should go check out at ageofjeremy.com. And then I decided to start collecting these portable readers um, because I already had the Karl Marx portable reader. So I picked up the Jung and the Nietzsche portable reader. Um, and so, um, the goal is, is to try to become a voracious reader if you have written or written or listened to the last episode. And so I've been spending a lot more time trying to read, um, just so I can come up with more content as well. Um, and then also share that content because the whole goal of everything that I'm trying to do is to share all the stuff that I learned so that if there's other me's out there or people that are interested in it, they can learn about it as well. So that being said, let's take a two second break, maybe a two minute break, maybe a three, three ad break right now. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about how to shift a little bit of your mindset into wealth. And you should definitely go pick up these books. I'm not going to put any of those. Actually, I'll put these books in the episode description and link them over to maybe Amazon, even though I recommend that you go and buy them in your own city um, so that that money can go. And if you can find someone in your city that is a small business owner is a book dealer. That would be really cool is to have your own book store. In fact, you know what? Maybe I'll do that. It, it went, the cool thing about having, I, I take that back. The cool thing that is about having money and being a little bit wealthy and, and getting into a place where you don't have to worry about money essentially. And if you keep your expenses down, you can, in my opinion, it would be cool to do something like that. Like I'd have, I would love to have a bookstore. Even if that bookstore didn't make me a millionaire, I would like to have one because I could put the books, uh, I can make it the way that I want it to be. And hopefully some people, would come and buy stuff. Maybe they wouldn't, but if they did, I would be ecstatic. And so that would be really cool. And I would have all these portable, portable biking, portable libraries, which are also from penguin um, up there and people could buy them. Um, so I think that, uh, I think that you should take some time to, um, check out these books, but I'll link them over to Amazon. Maybe depends on how I will link them over to Amazon. Go to the episode description. I'll put these bad boys in there. It won't really take that long. It's pretty easy. Then you can link over to them. Might be more difficult inside of um, 
oh, that's what it was. I have to change up the way that I do it in YouTube. No. So in, in the podcast so that it comes up better in YouTube. But anyways, I can do that. It'll be fine. So we're going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to talk about mindset and shifting your mindset and mine to a more of a wealth mindset. And I'm going to get some motivational concepts and some practical concepts in that too. So we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio. And I just realized if you were listening to this on YouTube, you will not hear any ads right there because that is from a different software. So hopefully if you're listening to this on YouTube, you heard this weird break and then I came back in. So I will, I will put a little disclaimer in that, like I just did in the future. So let's talk about being wealthy. Am I wealthy? Of course. Um, but, uh, can, and your thought process of wealth though is going to be different for every person. Um, I am wealthy in the sense that I do not have to worry about living paycheck to paycheck. I don't have to worry about money. I can buy most of the things that I want. Um, um, and, uh, but if, if, if my wants changed, then I would not be considered wealthy because I wouldn't be able to afford some of the things that other people think that are wealthy. Um, and so because I come from a very, very poor family, um, uh, at least with my mother and myself, um, I, I, it used to be that I just wanted a lot, a lot of money. And I've talked about this on the podcast, but I think that, I think that it's fair that one, I never judge anybody if they want to go and get money. And I never judge anybody for the things that they want to buy. If those things are things that are interesting. For instance, today, uh, we, I was at a part, uh, a, a birthday party today for one of my family members. And, um, my, one of my cousins has a really, really nice car. In fact, two of my cousins have really, really nice cars. Um, they think that I am super, super wealthy. I drive a Toyota 2014 Camry, and that's because I just am not interested in cars. Um, where, like, again, I went to the bookstore and had no problem dropping a hundred dollars on these books. And before I went to the party, I had no problem dropping a hundred dollars on games um, to bring to the party. So, in that capacity, it, it just depends on what it is that you enjoy. Don't buy things just because you're trying to keep up with the masses. Be yourself. Buy the things that you want. Be true to who you are and be you. But I will say this. So the one thing that has always been what we hear in social media that I think is the number one thing that you would need to shift in your mindset to push yourself to a wealthy mindset, whatever that means, what the wealthy mindset in my, in the way that I'm going to describe a wealthy mindset is being able to understand, to buy things that generate you income or go up in appreciation over time so that you can build larger and larger wealth. Okay. So what I mean by that is on, think about the balance sheet. A balance sheet has assets, which are the things that you own that can appreciate or depreciate in value. You subtract out your liabilities, which is a fancy, stupid word for debt. I'm sure that there's more meaning for it and it's not whatever it means debt. So you're taking your assets, minus any debt that you have and what's left over. That's your net worth. That's the number that you should be focusing on. And the more that you have assets that generate you income, over and above the amount of debt that you have on it, the bigger your net worth will be and the better you can survive and live the life that you want to live and do the things that you want to live. And so you have to decide what that number is. But to get to that number, you do have to realize that you have to start buying things that create income for you over time. Okay. And so the number one way to think about that and to do that is you have to, the the first thing, and you might think that it's a stupid, you might think that's ridiculous, but you have to understand grit and you have to be consistent 
and have discipline to do things that you don't want to do when you are unmotivated to do them. A lot of people push this concept in 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 the world that we have to be super super motivated. We have to get up there and get out of it. And and what happens is when we buy and again I'm just going to use people's names because I'm not nothing against Tony Robbins. He seems like a really great guy. But like if you go to a Tony Robbins seminar, you're pumped up while you're there, and then when you get back in the world, you don't have the the motivation anymore. And that's because you were fucking high as a kite, not literally high, but you were super stoked when you were with that thing with Tony Robbins. But then when you got in the real world and had to put in the actual work, you're not going to be excited to do that shit every day. Like doing this right now, as I get into it, it's getting better to do, right? Like I'm, I'm more happy about doing this. Um, and, and this isn't that, that difficult. And I like sharing stuff with people, but like I had gone to a party today and I did CJV's podcast. And then I was like, okay, let me just record my podcast. And I was not motivated to even record this. Now, as I get going into it. Oh, I love, I love doing this. And that's kind of what I pushed myself. Like I knew once I started, I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. I can probably get into doing this. But the point is, is that I was not motivated to do it, but I had know that it has to go out because it's going to impact at least one person. And that's important to me. And two, I can get more content and start building out my YouTube page. And that excites me. But I knew that I had to be consistent with this and I knew that I had to be disciplined with it. The same thing with so many things. There's these meetings that I have on Mondays that I hate um, and um, and and uh, I don't like doing them because I'm not a big fan of meetings. And so when I do these meetings, I'm super unmotivated to do them, but I have to do them and I have to do them consistently. And what gets you to do that is great. And I will say the number one thing that college taught me was a ridiculous amount of being able to do, to have grit. And the reason why is that you have to do stuff in college that you don't want to do. You have to learn things that you don't want to learn. You have to write things that you don't want to write. You have to do ridiculous, stupid stuff for really long periods of time. And from that, you learn the ability to have grit. And with that ability to have grit, you will do things that you don't necessarily want to do all the time, but that's the way that you can make your dreams happen. There is stuff that I do not want to do that you may not want to do either, but you have to do those things and you have to do them consistently. And the better that you are to do those, the better the, 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 um, likelihood is that over time you will build wealth from different sources of income. It's very hard to work 16 hours a day. Sometimes you have to do it. Sometimes you have to work 18 hours a day. Sometimes you have to work 20 or 24 hours a day, right? And if you if you have the grit to do that, I'm not saying you have to do that every day. Sometimes you will have to do that when you're building a business or trying to be successful. And having that grit will help you push past the ability to not do that. So that's the first thing. The second thing that you have to do is you have to be doing things that you love. If you just love making money, then cool. It's going to be a lot easier for you than something else. But if you if you want to be happy doing something, you have to be able to find out what that is, what your special skill set is, get good at that thing, continuously get good at that, and then sell it to customers directly, not selling it to your labor, right? So a lot of people always say that, you know, you should you should always get that that labor job because of the fact that that that's how you're going to make a living and you should do your 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 fun stuff on the side. That is true at the start of it, but if that fun stuff, whatever it is, if you're able to sell that directly to customers, that is how you're going to make money. I I essentially do the exact same thing that I did at the bank right now with advice but now I sell it directly to customers and we have it in an e-learning format so I can make money year month daily while I sleep. Okay. And so that's the thing that a lot of wealthy people realize was that if you listen to Charlie Munger or you listen to mainly Charlie Munger, he's going to say things like, I didn't want to work for someone else. He wanted to sell his labor to the customer directly and cut out the middleman. And that is one of the things that is that, that you have to change your mindset on to become wealthy is that I need to start selling to customers the things that I can do. Now, once that happens, you have to realize that I need to now take advantage of other people's labor. And I know that might seem counter, um, kind of hypocritical of me to say, especially since I am very anti-capitalistic in totality, but I don't, my point, my, my goal in this is to not to change your mindset about our economic system. My goal is to make it so you can thrive in the economic system that we are currently in. 
And so to, to thrive in the economic system that we're currently in, once you are able to sell your labor directly to customers, then you have to figure out how you can take that money, not take so much of it, put it back into the business and buy other people to, to do what they're doing, right? Right. And then they will start getting more and then you'll start getting more money in. Okay. And then the thing that I try to tell people that I work for is I want them to go and try to make their own money so that they can do it and they don't have to always labor for me. The marketplace for labor can always be existent with those people trying to go and make their own money. But what capitalists end up doing is then they stop their people from doing that. And so I would encourage you when you're doing that is help your people get more, more money by them selling their other things that they enjoy doing, or maybe even things that they do and they can freelance it and they can buy someone and they can grow their businesses too. But it always starts by taking what your skill set is and being able to sell it directly to customers. Okay. And then, so the next thing is, is that the, the mind shift set changes that as that money comes in, do not just want to buy more and more stuff. That's the other problem is that when you start getting more money, you start just buying more shit, getting more debt. And that's not how a mind, most mindset wealth is. If you listen to Robert Kiyosaki, he's always going to be talking about fucking debt. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm not trying to pull a quick one over you. I'm talking about how the majority of people do it. Then they will go and buy things like life insurance to make the money, which has a bottom and a cap. I'm not going to go into that. You could go and buy buildings. You can go buy more businesses. You can start more businesses. You can do other things. So when that money comes in, don't get excited. So me, I own my car. That means that I don't have a 500, sorry. That means that I don't have a 500 to a thousand dollar a month car payment or higher insurance, which frees me up more cash that then I can go invest in other businesses or buy more labor or buy an assistant so that I can become more productive. So that is how you have to shift your, your mindset in wealth is to realize one, one, that you have to have grit, that you have to do shit that you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. it, it you just got to get over it and you're just going to have to do that. Secondly, is start figuring out how you can sell directly to your customers yourself. And then three, figure out how you can how you can leverage labor by getting more and more of you to do more and more of what you do. And then you can manage it, whether you can buy a manager to manage it and then sit at the top and do it. Okay. So th those are the three main things. The fourth thing is, is you have to change your mindset of short-term versus long-term. You have to have a long-term goal and short-term goals, but you have to realize that this is where I want to be in 10 years. If I, if I plan to be in here in 10 years, and this is what it's going to cost me every year, this is what it's going to cost me every day, month, this is what it's going to cost me every week, and this one's going to cost me every day, and you focus on those things, then eventually you will start building a snowball effect of money coming in and wealth happening. So we've been doing the same thing, or I've been doing the same thing for six years, right? Six or seven years, and now I am starting to get more prevalent on social media. Again, I'm not like a big social media, like famous person, but the more eyes that I have, the more that I can share with people, the more that I could talk with people. And then when I write a book or if I say, go buy this, you guys will go and do it. Right. So, so, um, so that's a long-term thing. I've been doing it for a long time. It starts to grow. Okay. Then I have, okay, I'm trying to find this many sources of income, right? I have one, two, three, four, five sources of income, and I'm trying to get to 10. And then I'm trying to get my businesses each to 10 sources of income. And so when you do that, you, then you start to get this, 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 like this snowball effect where you are always having money constantly come in and then you continuously do those same things. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have nice stuff or you shouldn't buy stuff, but what I'm saying is the longer that you can hold off while you're building all these sources of income, then eventually it will s compound so much that you will just have a bunch, uh, a bunch of money. Okay. And then you can even do more exciting things with it. Like then go invest in other companies, try to get on their board, build other businesses, do the things that you want to do, or maybe your goal is to retire. I don't judge anybody. If you tell me that all you want to do is get a shit ton of money so you don't have to work anymore, that is perfectly okay. Working all the time is ridiculous. I do not disagree with that. Um, and so, so if you get to that point, then you get to do what you, you want to do. Um, so that's, that's, those are the big ones that are going to kind of shift your mindset. The other ones is, um, another one that, that, that comes to mind is that you have to be willing to, um, you, you have to be 
willing and able to fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and suck and try and do and try and suck. Right. So like if people like, okay, you've been doing age of rating, I've been putting money into it, right. It's not a super profitable business. It's still getting off because I, I, it's still getting bigger and bigger because I don't have the time and energy to put into it. Now I get to put more time and energy into it because I have a better plan. I have more money. I can hire more people. I take the money that I get from my other businesses, put it into that. And then those things start to compound. So as long as you are okay with sucking and failing and keeping going, eventually you will start to hit that compounding effect. And that's super, super important to to switching that mindset. Okay. The other thing that wealthy people do is they read businessy stuff. Um, I am not, again, all those books that I read, I find more value in reading those, but again, I went to business school, so I have a pretty good knowledge of it. I would recommend that if you don't understand financial statements, spend a, buy a class, buy a, buy a six week class from a professional company from an Ivy league school like Harvard or Yale or Northwestern or whatever the case is, go or Stanford, go through like a six week financial course or a course that a CFO would go through so that you could completely understand the financial piece of, of business. That'd be the first one. The second one is I would understand how stock markets, portfolios, bonds, all of those types of investment works. And you can find really good businessy, like again, professional study stuff that does that. And then marketing market. Those are the three most important things in my opinion that can lead someone to be successful is you have to have really, really good, strong understanding of marketing. You have to have a really good, strong understanding of financial reports, and you have to have a really good, strong understanding of investments as you are going and building, make time for those types of education, because that's the type of education that people that think wealthy or have a wealthy mindset or are wealthy, they learn that. And then they teach that to the people that are coming up in their families or in their business to make sure that they know it so that you can sustain and create longevity within your businesses and within your wealth. So I didn't write any of this down. So I'm going to see if I can recap. One, you got to learn grit. Grit yourself out. Do shit that you don't want to do. I always say meditation real real quick before I go through a full full recap. Meditation also works for grit um, is because if you can learn to sit for five minutes or 10 minutes and it's irritating and annoying and you push yourself past it and then you can sit for 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or an hour or two hours or three hours or six hours or seven hours or eight hours or nine hours or 10 hours or sit and read for long periods of time, you can do the same thing with reading. If you get good at doing those things for long periods of time, then when you have to do something that you don't do, you have that, I guess that like habit built into you that you can push past those things that you don't want to do. So like, for instance, if you like are stuck at night, um, over, I had to do testing for Merlin the other, I didn't want to do it. Um, I was tired. I wanted to go to sleep or I wanted to relax. I haven't played video games. I'm always motivated to play video games. Um, I wanted to play video games. I haven't played video games in like two weeks. And I was like, I just want to do that. But I was like, I got to do this testing. And that, that, that irritation, I was like, okay, this is the more important thing. I can get through it. I can grind it out. Let me just do the testing. And then when I'm done, if it it doesn't go too late, I can play games or I can go to sleep and I can rest. And so meditation and pushing yourself past your meditation limits helps with that and pushing yourself past reading limits helps with that. So I will just say that is find a thing that you hate doing, do it a lot, do it for a long period of time, and then you'll just have that habit built into you. Okay. So for a recap, one, make sure that you get grit. Okay. And again, I didn't write any of this down, so I don't know if I'm going to fully be able to recap any of this. Um, it was just stuff that was stuck in my head, and I wanted to share it with you because those are the things that are super beneficial for me. So recap. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to recap any of this because I really forgot every... No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so make sure that you understand about um, grit. After you understand that you need to have grit, make sure that then you figure out how to sell yourself directly to customers, whatever that is. If you're working in a job, do it on the side. Maybe we're 20, 30. um, I'm sorry. Maybe work an extra 40 hours a week, do an 80 hour week, 40 hours at your job, 40 hours at your other thing, selling directly to customers. Once you figure that part out, realize that you can't do that forever and you're not going to grow and grow and grow 
unless you have other people laboring for you to then make it larger and larger and larger. So then go and find more labor that can replicate yourself so that then you can move into an ownership capacity or a management capacity in that business. And eventually you can go to governance and then you can go out and just be a stockholder and own it. The other thing that you need to do is as more money comes in, don't expend it right? After you get the laborers and you get that business growing and growing and growing and making money while you're sleeping because it's on autopilot, right? It's a store that's running itself or you have an e-learning course or you have, you know, whatever that you have a bunch of, a bunch of, um, people that are working for you, keeping that money coming in, right? Don't just, don't just expense that. Put it into more assets that are going to get you either more appreciation appreciation income or another type of income that's going to be coming to you. And the longer you can hold out doing that, the larger you can make that, the more money you will have coming in. And then that is how you can start to create that freedom. Then what I would recommend doing is really understanding financial statements and understanding how the balance sheet works, how the financial statements work, how the cash flow statement statements work, understand marketing and understand investing, because then you can change your mindset. You can educate yourself. So then you can make better decisions and you're less likely to be oppressed by the other advisors that are selling you every everything. Um, and then from there, teach that to whoever you want um, in your family to keep that going. And then there's lots of other things that you can do. And some of those things that we teach, actually, we teach a lot of this in our 3T Warrior Academy. So again, seven day free trial for 3T Warrior Academy in the episode description. Hit me up um, on the DMs and any of my social media if you want to ask me any questions about this. I am more than happy to share. And I always say, be thankful, grateful, and kind. And we will talk with you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to The Age of Jeremy. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. One last time, go and follow me on all the social medias at Age of Jeremy. Um, If you like this podcast, make sure that you give it a review, like it, share it, do all kinds of stuff. And also remember, you can listen to these now on YouTube. So go subscribe to my YouTube channel at Age of Jeremy. The beginning song was uh, Brave Faces Everyone by Spanish Love Songs. The clothing song was Threatening Each Other Recapitalism by Illuminati hotties um my favorite microphones are neumann microphones we record this on a zoom l8 i record in steinberg's cubase and i use waves plugins one last time be thankful grateful and kind we'll talk with you next time bye